the Lord Privy Seal. My Lords, I beg to acquaint the House that a commission has been issued under the Great Seal to several Lords therein, naming, or, named authorising the said Lords to declare in the name and on behalf of Her Majesty, Her Majesty's approbation of the choice of the Commons of the Right Honourable Sir Lindsay Hoyle to be their Speaker. Let the Commons know that the Lords Commissioners desire their immediate attendance in this House to hear the Commission read.
My Lords, I acquaint your Lordships that Her Majesty's faithful commons, in obedience to the Royal Command, have, in their exercise of their undoubted rights and privileges, proceed to the election of a Speaker, and that their choice has fallen on me. I therefore present myself at your Lordship's bar and submit myself with all humility for Her Majesty's gracious approbation. My Lords and Members of the House of Commons, it not being convenient to Her Majesty to be personally present here at this time, a commission has been issued under the Great Seal, commanding us and several other Lords therein named to notify and declare Her Majesty's approbation of the choice of her faithful commons of Sir Lindsay Hoyle to be their speaker, which commission you will now hear read. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and of our other realms and territories Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, to all to whom these presents shall come, a greeting. Whereas we did lately, for diverse, difficult and pressing affairs concerning us, the states and defence of our United Kingdom and the Church, ordain this our present Parliament to begin and be holden at our city of Westminster the 13th day of June in the 66th year of our reign, on which day our said Parliament was begun and holden and is there now holden. And whereas we have been informed that the lower house of our said Parliament have lately made choice of our beloved and faithful the Right Honourable Sir Lindsay Harvey Hoyle Knight in the room of our beloved and faithful John Simon Burko Esquire to be Speaker of the said lower house of our said Parliament, of which choice we are graciously pleased to approve and allow and confirm the same. And forasmuch as for diverse causes and considerations we cannot conveniently at this time be present in our royal person, in our said Parliament, know ye that we, trusting in the fidelity and care of the Most Reverend Father in God and our faithful Councillor Justin Portal, Archbishop of Canterbury, Primate of all England and Metropolitan, our well-beloved and faithful Councillors, Robert James Buckland, Chancellor of Great Britain, Natalie Jessica, Baroness Evans of Bowes Park, Nabnit, Lord Delarkia, Igor, Lord Judge, Angela Evans, Baroness Smith of Basildon, and other Lords of our Privy Council, by the tenor of these presents do give and grant to them, or any three or more of them, full power in our name to declare and notify our royal approbation of the choice of the said Lindsay Harvey Hoyle to be Speaker of the said Lower House of our said Parliament and to allow and confirm the said Lindsay Harvey Hoyle to be Speaker of the said Lower House and to do all things in our said Parliament that may be necessary for declaring our said royal approbation, allowance and confirmation of the said Lindsay Harvey Hoyle to be Speaker of the said Lower House of our said Parliament. In witness whereof we have caused these our letters to be made patent. Witness ourself at Westminster the fourth day of November in the 68th year of our reign. By the Queen herself signed with her own hand. Sir Lindsay, we have it in command from Her Majesty to declare Her Majesty's entire confidence in your talents, diligence and sufficiency to fulfil the important duties of the High Office of Speaker of the House of Commons, to which you have been chosen by that House, and in obedience to the commission which has been read, and by virtue of the authority therein contained, we do declare Her Majesty's royal allowance and confirmation of you, sir, as Speaker of the House of Commons. My Lords, I submit myself with all humility and gratitude to Her Majesty's royal will and pleasure. I pray that if, 
in the discharge of my duties and in the maintenance of the rights and privileges of the Commons, House of Parliament, I should inadvertently fall into error. It may be imputed to me alone and not to Her Majesty's faithful Commons.